In today's episode, we have 90 Day Fiance reality star Rebecca Parrott. One of the producers came over and she was just looking at me in this weird way. And I was like, what? Do I have something in my teeth? Like, what is it? And she goes, Rebecca shares details on relationships, self love, and her recent weight loss. <laughs> it makes me emotional. Like, I'm, I've been the, 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 the before for so long. Plus, stories about her time on 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> no, do you know what's ironic is with, and I've never told anybody this ever in my entire life. Nobody knows this. So this is a little bit of a piece of tea here. But before we jump in, be sure to like this video, leave us a comment, and hit subscribe for more content like this. So, so this is kind of cool because we not only have another person with tattoos, which I thought was the main whole thing. Like, I'm like, hey, cool, we got a guest with tattoos. I figured that was the story. Finally, I'm not alone. And then it turns out like it's like the queen of reality TV, and you yes. guys are screaming and yelling and doing big time your fans thing. over here. We've big been telling you. him about 90 Day Fiance forever. Why? Why have you? Not watched until I, now. I have now. Now we had a reason to. And so did you like it? I, I it's possible I was texting you guys last night with like do we you were laughing. Do you believe that girl Hannah offered moving trucks? What is she thinking? Yes. I'm like I'm like, I would have ripped her hair out if I was Rebecca. Yeah, I like, did say that. So, do you know do you know what I hate is scenes like that where I get torn up later mm. for being too jealous and you shouldn't have said anything and you made him look bad and all this other stuff. I'm like, but you weren't there and yeah. that's cut out like the really bad stuff oh, that she oh, said. No. Oh, girl, to you make were me on. look bad. Uh -huh. I could see it. That girl had evil thirsty. in her eyes. Oh yeah, I was not happy with what I saw in that Hannah girl Thank whatsoever. You. And I'm I'm new. I'm new to this. So for anyone who hasn't guessed, we have Rebecca Parrott from 90 Day Fiance. Yay. Thank you for having me. And tattoos. So it's like a double bonus. <laughs> yes. So it's like really cool stuff. So yeah. So the way this is a phenomenon, by the way. That is mm -hmm. is it crazy for you? I mean, people walk down the street and they I, when I saw you walk walking into our building downstairs before and it's still COVID out in the world and there's yeah. not like a ton of cars here that used to be and I actually saw people like taking out their cell phone or taking <laughs> pictures or whatever and then I yeah. was so sad because none of it was for me and I'm like oh I'm a nobody I forgot it was oh, all for no. you. No, 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 I doubt that. Um, but so what, what is that like for you all of a sudden or how long has it been going on? Yeah, so we started filming um, 2019 mm. and you know of course you I, I actually had never watched the show before I got picked for it ah. um, it's a long story about how I got on the show but um, I had never watched it so I wasn't really familiar with how popular it was I couldn't gauge it mm -hmm. but I remember that while we were filming the first time one of the producers came over and she was just looking at me in this weird way and I was like what do I have something in my teeth like what is it and she goes no, I'm just looking because now you're all sweet and innocent and pretty soon you're going to get famous and, you know, it's going to change. And I was like, what? She goes, oh, girl, just wait. And I was like, right? oh, my God. Yeah, she was totally right. She's totally right. It's crazy. <laughs> Everywhere I go. And now you make her carry someone, the coffee around. Exactly. You're like, remember you, Miss Producer? Exactly. I said two sugars, two sugars. <laughs> well, you know what's ironic is when you first start filming they treat you the same immediately as if you have been filming for five years, okay? Mm. So when you first start filming, if you mention that there's even an inkling of maybe you would like a banana milkshake, within a few minutes, there's a banana milkshake sitting Aww, in front of you. And good. when you're not used to that, it is bizarre mm. and I felt guilty. And I was like, but now I'm just like, hey, you know what? I want a banana milkshake. Would you go get one? Well, there's really not, there's not any place around here, but there's a grocery store down the street. You can buy some bananas, you know? So you start changing That's a why bit. we, I tried to teach them for years. That's why we treat people miserably from the outset right. to condition them the right Lower the bar. Way. How did you guys get hooked? I know that like, you know. I actually think it was season three, 90 days before yeah. the 90 days that actually got me hooked but it started with actually Amy and Maggie are big fans and they kept saying you gotta watch it you gotta watch it but it sounded like a little interesting but it also sounded like I don't really get it yeah. but then once you watch it yeah. mm -hmm. it takes one episode you're so hooked on just like 
the the I know you're real people, but like the characters and the storylines, yeah. and it's so intriguing. <laughs> you can't stop watching. And I think that first time I watched it, I think that was my whole weekend. Yeah, just been yeah. binge watch the whole season. We're all train wrecks, and uh, you know the the first few times that, that the show came on, and I had to start dealing with negative comments and things. I handled it really well, and they. I was just as shocked as anybody else because they don't tell you how to do that. You either get it or you don't, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, I kept hearing, you're such a train wreck, you're a hot mess, you're this, you're that. And I remember making this meme and it said, of course I'm a hot mess. That's why they chose me. Right. Like, what are you trying? You're, right. you know, like you're telling me I'm, you know, I'm five nine. Yeah, I am. What? Like, you know, and I owned it. But even if you're not a hot mess, I mean, let's be real. I mean, any of these reality shows. I'm not just talking about yeah. Ninety Day, but I've known a lot of people on different shows and, and seen them produce. They definitely try to add drama. I'm not saying oh, it's yeah. fake, but the idea, if you're the producers of those shows, sure. they're not getting good ratings when everybody gets along and hugs and right. high fives and walks off into the sunset like having yes. the best life ever. Yes. So there's one scene in the first season that we filmed before the 90 days that I am sitting on a soccer field with Sied's friends and it's the first time I've met them and they're all cross-legged in front of me like a bunch of kids, which that's how they set it up. I didn't think about it at the time. <laughs> and they're asking me questions and I thought that it went really well. Like mm -hmm. I was super proud of it. And I was like, oh, that was kind of cool. They're not going to bend friends. and twist that. This is going to be. And then I watched it and I was like, what just happened? <laughs> Oh my God! They, they made you come out like you're. So well, they took, and you know what? I own it because they did not CGI anything. That was me. But they took things that were said and put my facial expressions right. into these things, and 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 just steered it a certain way or whatever. It mm -hmm. all really happened. It was right. just an editing thing that that can I was tell, like, oh. Can you I tell see. now? You've been doing this long enough. Um, when the direction they're trying to go with it and you're like oh i see i, I see the hill they're pushing me over here <laughs> yes. um, or the cliff but and, and do you even try to resist it at this point you're like it's gonna happen either way i'm going over the cliff so i'm just gonna yeah. no i mean so one thing that i've that i learned the hard way is when the producers really want to focus on something that's going on yeah. um not so much scripting and all that stuff it's that there's there's a there's a topic that they want you to cover for instance the the fact that i used to date women okay didn't so, know that. Yes. Show that just took, a show. Show just took a, another twist uh, right there. Yeah. Okay. So Real. it was it was a short time in my in my life. I had, I had been married to my kid's father for 15 years. He was very abusive, especially towards the end. Mm. And, you know, I ran to the other team. I thought, well, this team isn't playing very well. I'm going to check out the other team. So it's not something that um, I identify with now. It's not something that I plan to revisit. I'm happy where I'm at, but it's it's who I am and I'm fine with that. But I was filming with a very strongly Muslim, strict Islamic faith man whose family, if they found out that his fiance used to date women would be a deal breaker. Right. Mm. And I, I didn't know how to handle it, but I ended up just giving in and saying, okay, fine, I'll tell him. Mm -hmm. And he handled it so well. He got a little bit of backlash because he was like, you cannot let my family find out about this kind of thing. And, and the LGBTQ community got pissed off about that. But you know what? That was the, that was the, the best of all outcomes, I think, that mm -hmm. what it could have yeah. been. But, but my, my mistake was thinking that if I just say it, okay, fine, it's out there. I'll have to answer a few questions, but it'll be over with. Mm -hmm. And that's not how reality TV works. So they <laughs> film the scene and then you do an OTF, an on the fly interview after the fact. And then you go in and do the all day interview and they ask you 15 more questions. And then you have to do pickup interviews because they need more questions and that it comes up then. Mm -hmm. And then when you film the tell all, it comes up then. Yeah. And then in every interview you do for media, all the social media stuff, people, it never goes away. It is a monster at that point. Because they know they've got a button. They're like in the back of their mind. They're like, now on season 57, mm -hmm. if, if if Rebecca, um, you know, meets like a, a pretty woman, that could really like mm -hmm. get our ratings over to season 100. Let's, let's remember yep. that. Like they're not going to let go of something if they think nope. that there's something there. We had a funny um, experience. I know you've watched our podcast before um, and some of the episodes. I don't know if you saw one of the ones, but uh, 
a former friend, associate of mine, who's actually my boss about 20 years ago, who's a, a mafia hitman, retired former oh, mafia yeah, hitman. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. And, uh, and I, when, I, when he was my boss, it was not in that line of work. It was a legitimate Good business. Good to know. <laughs> but it was the craziest thing because as we were getting ready to do the show with him, we called the Pitchman and the Hitman, and we've done a series of them, um, and he, would, he kept saying to me, hey, did you watch that? And he lives in the Philippines, and we'd have like a 10-hour time difference in, in the middle of COVID. So what have you been doing over there to, to keep saying Oh, I'm just this 90 day fiance, but I've used all the episodes. There's nothing. He is, so let's show you that you got to watch this interview. This is hilarious. This is from one of what? our actual what? podcasts mm-hmm. where he talks about it. I mean, you can tell this is not made up. Right. Oh, one second. Adrian's going to pull it up, but it's like, it's real. This is where I'm like, there's something to this thing, man. When you got like, everyone was sending me like all these Netflix shows and Amazon shows and movies and like, oh, ask him about this, ask him about pop culture. I'm like, yeah, I understand, man. The only show I've ever heard the guy talk about in the last year is like with 90 Day Fiance. Is that yes. what it's called? I'm like, the guy watches 90 Day Fiance. He's like, Drew, did you see this episode? I'm like, you kidding me? I watch it. I, you have good hilarious. taste in shows. It's so, it's funny, so addicting. What, so yes. what, what is the deal so with that? Hilarious. Drew needs to get with it. It's, you still it's, watching that? You know what it is? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a constant cluster. You know, that it's just constant. I mean, it's just a, one disaster after another. And, you know, and of course, you know, they got the thing playing in real time. But, you know, one person is totally disadvantaged. And that's a foreigner, you know, and the, that's trying to get to America. And it's just like blatant that they want to get to the United States almost like nine out of ten, you know, times. And they're just the dynamics of, of just the whole thing, man. Love and relationships and the cultural differences and, you know, the fact, you know, that old factor and. It's just, it's pretty bizarre, man. Now, now this guy I was love like, it. with one of the top, like, I don't want to grade him as a top, but like a, a real, like, mafia crew that he was an enforcer, a hitman fears and stuff. And, you know, he's going to, d- not, doesn't do that anymore. But, and he's, you could see, I mean, he, he's yeah. in a small little apartment in a third world country. <laughs> and, uh, and he's sitting there yeah. watching 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> yeah. So I did a, uh, because they just, they just did uh, Discovery Plus, which is amazing. It's so much TV in one place. It's crazy. Um, but I was doing some, uh, some marketing for them. And I did a series of interviews on the phone with, I think, four or five different uh, media outlets in different countries um, Bulgaria, uh, Poland. Poland, Norway, and Germany or something, I forget. Um, Anyway, it was amazing to me. We don't think about that. Like, I just think America watches it. And okay, fine, it's probably on YouTube. I mean, it is on YouTube. And and so I'm sure it gets watched other way. No, it is released in other countries. It is a series in other countries. And it turns out that Ziad and I are like massively popular, I think in yes. Norway. Oh, and oh yeah, and I was like, well, that's the coolest thing ever. I had never thought about that, so I love it. Wow. And he's also a stand-in for Tim Tebow. A lot of people didn't <laughs> yeah. know that. We yeah. did. I mean, we'll, we'll show it later, side by side. But we were looking at that. Yeah. Uh, you had a picture of him, and and I was like, that's Tim Tebow. Yeah. And you're like, no, that's <laughs> and, yeah. Right. You see it now. Yeah. yeah, I do. And I'm, you know what? That is so much of a better reference than Sal Volcano, whatever his name is, Vol- yeah. Volcano. I don't know what it is. Um, from Impractical Jokers. And if he's listening, I love you. You're great. But yeah. Tim Tebow. What, <laughs> what, Tim you, Tebow's what better. Yeah, I was going to say. Go, uh, or go ahead. How did you bring that up to Ziad? Like, hey, babe, I know we're newly dating, but we're going to be on a TV show. I submitted us. Yes. And picked us. How did he Good take question. that? <laughs> okay. So interestingly enough, Ziad was an actor in Tunisia. Ah. Which we tried not to discuss on 90 Day Fiance until after the first season because we were really concerned and we were rightly concerned Mm -hmm. that, oh, he's an actor, is he? Mm. Yeah. Right, right. So yeah, like maybe obviously it, it may it did not help our case in at all that mm-hmm. he was already doing that. So he he's actually been an actor since he was nine years old in mm-hmm. Tunisia. He's done Coca Cola commercials, oh, music cool. videos, wow. movies, series, uh, all kinds of stuff. So for him, it was like okay, that's fine, we'll do it. Yeah, he was he's been game from game day one. Oh, that's nice. And, yeah. and, you, and you guys have something in common. You share a little history with a specific brand that you're both fans of. You know, you can take the lead on that well we share sonobello oh yes that's true there you go i think i got my procedure back in june and you got yours when did you get yours um again? mine was december december mm-hmm. that's right so you're at what two what, what 
month are we in? Two months, two and a little, little mm-hmm. more than two months, almost the three month mark, eh? That is insane. It feels like it's been forever. Right? This body feels like it's been mine for a lot longer than that. <laughs> did you know that she was a Sonabello girl? Customer, I didn't. Success no. story, woman, lady, yeah. mom, I don't That's want to get in trouble <laughs> covering them all. You're in trouble no matter what. I, I was going to say. So you haven't, show her your pictures. Okay. A- I'll Adrian's show you my like pictures. one of their, like, you know, she was running, helping us run the commercial, the brand, because we do all their marketing and advertising. Mm-hmm. Shameless plug for us here. <laughs> um, and we do a really, really good job for them. There you They're go. very happy with us. And then she was like, I want to do this procedure for for lipo and look, look here's the results that she had for yeah. real like i think we got similar areas by the mm-hmm. way i had the ex uh skin oh, removal yes. as well so that's my you had the ex done as well i did Isn't yeah that amazing it's amazing it Can, really is what's the ex again for those of us so who... that's the skin removal and it's like the equivalent of a of a tummy tuck the right. mini tummy tuck yeah so they right. don't go into the muscle the um you get the benefits of it being immediate and um the recovery time is like ten percent of what, oh, yeah. what it would, like a full full tummy tuck, you're out. Yeah. You're out for, for a couple several, months, yeah. If not more right. than that. Yeah. And but with the EX, you stay awake. It's very quick. You get immediate results. The the recovery time. Right. I had mine done on Sunday. I was back at work Friday morning. See now, if you're or if you're the brand, the people at Sonabello and the CEO, and they're all going to be watching this podcast, mm-hmm. they have mixed reactions about that question from me. Because one, they're like, how are we paying that idiot all this money to? do all the marketing for the brand and he doesn't know what EX is. But then on the other hand, you're like, oh, that's a good question. It got Leave them it talking the about it. So they're happy yeah. about that. So they're good. I'm probably fired. But they're, no. like, they're, they're like, we knew see, No, did. but see, the truth is you you knew, but you had to ask so that we could see, explain it. See, there you go. see it's like the, the Brian Spears interview all over again. It was, it was a decoy. He's too good at playing that dumb. Right, so true. right, right. We did the, we did the so interview true. that's been everywhere with uh, with Brian Spears. So it was, that is, and yes. it's been in that framing Britney Spears movie. And people like, we saw, you know, and the funniest part is if you go back and read the comments from the original interview, and I, I'd said at the time, like when we were going to interview him, I disclosed him, like I have never followed Britney's right. music that much. I didn't know who Brian was, but it, opportunity came up to interview him. And we since got very immersed in it and are very happy to see the, the free Britney movement succeeding yes. and taking off. And, uh, you know, obviously we've had huge concerns for her and other people yeah. in similar situations. So glad to see the publicity it's finally getting. But um, during the interview with him, I you know, asked several questions that you know was clear that I wasn't like a long time. Hold on, right. let me fill you in. He asked how her daughters were. Now Aww. she has two sons. Yeah. Okay. Oopsies, Anyone right? knows. Yeah. 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 So, there, so there were a couple of other little <laughs> oopsies like that along the way. So, right, so afterwards I'm like, man, I, the pe- and I, we start to look at the comments, like thousands of comments, this and that. And, person like right right drew on the thing it was so brilliant how you acted so dumb to to just play dumb and lure him into you you let him put his guard down next one's like oh my god i saw the same thing it was brilliant he just acted like a total moron sitting and and you're like reading down these people are congratulating me for being the stupidest person ever interviewing someone and you go from feeling good about all the until like well, you're like, yep. Mm-hmm. No, you're like, hashtag nailed it. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, there were a hundred others saying, who hired this guy? Oh, <laughs> okay, How did he on. get an Mo- interview with Mo- Brian yeah. Spears? Mo- moving on. Now we're moving on to the next topic now. He, but he is like notoriously, um, he doesn't, he do. doesn't do interviews. He, he, had, so. he, no, he only did one, so that was that was That's it. probably his last one yeah, ever, poor guy. Speaking of, you can't say anything right or wrong. He was shamed from every person in every direction because of what he said. So no, you can't make anyone happy when you talk on you camera. Can. Yeah. You know. Well, not just situation yeah so well yeah people are probably mad at me right now for no reason well there's a lot of reasons to be mad at you know, i would like to list them at any point in time but that would be a 27 We're going hour a different show direction here right, you guys right. well i'm known as the filter queen i did hear that yes 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 but i, I saw know. a photo of you with no filter recently mm-hmm. why did you post that um no so that's the thing back when i met zied i did post a lot of filtered pictures because I that was when apps that do that was really you know they were really becoming popular and okay he's young and hot and it was not I don't want you to see what I look like it mm-hmm. was I can look like that <laughs> sort of mm-hmm. just that little subconscious well you know I could be a complete two you know whatever mm-hmm. but look at that um, he did see me when I first woke up on video. We talked all the time, and, and that was kind of that part was left out, so it made it look like I catfished him, mm-hmm. and that was kind of crazy. But 
So recently I had some Dysport done, like which is like Botox. I had some lip injections done and um, I just turned 50 and I'm trying to take care of myself. The Sonobello was the first mm-hmm. part. And now when I post pictures and they are not filtered, no one will let it go. Really? That you're not filtering? Yes. Oh my gosh. So in many, in many ways, it's, a, it's a compliment. It's, it's, a, it's yeah. a compliment. Yes. I mean, look, you, I, I will say, I love what you just said, that, that you just turned 50 and you wanted to take care of yourself. Yes. Um, and we've talked about that on this show before. We've had Dr. Orden from the doctors, who's a renowned plastic mm-hmm. surgeon. Obviously, a lot of our clients and brands are... You've got fillers on it, camera. I, I did. I got. I have no issue with that whatsoever. Yeah. I'm still in the market for calf implants. I can't really find <laughs> where they make them or how affordable, but I have calf envy. I suffer from it. I never had a chance in life of being a sock model. It just right. wouldn't happen. Right. Uh, but I have to live with that. But so, but so, no, but the fact that when you say that I just want to take care of myself, I, I think that's such a great topic because we lived in this world of even, I mean, I knew women who would have breast implants and then, then they would still be shaming others about having breast implants because yes. they wouldn't acknowledge their own, but if they could find out or prove someone else did. And it's and it's so much, it's so silly, and it's, it goes to that mean society. And I actually really like that, that we've gotten into that world much more so, that if you want to do something, if, mm-hmm. it, if it makes you feel better about you, then do it. And if you yep. don't, then don't. But yeah. we've talked about mm-hmm. that. Like, yeah, you know, it's on a bellow for you, oh, working so mom. Happy. Yeah. Two kids, your mm-hmm. husband is a cop, works full time, and despite the fact that you have the most flexible job in the world, the most understanding boss who maybe expects you to work 10 hours a week, if that, it still could. 10 hours a week? Yeah. Huh? Much, much more no, than I'm, that, I, but. Just counting Saturdays. <laughs> But I mean, you know, and, and again, and I, I always love. It. I remember when you came to me and said, "Hey, I'm going to do Sona Bello. Is it okay if I reach yeah. out to the brand?" And, and I and I and I said, "Yeah, you want me to do? I keep it under. I can keep it quiet." So no, because I, my natural assumption was that right. Most nobody, people that you want it want hush hush. Yeah. And and she's like, "No, you can tell people." I'm like, "Okay, I'll just tell them." No, you can tell anyone. I don't. And I thought that yeah. was so wonderful. I was yeah. really proud mm-hmm. of her that she was so comfortable. Um, and then you came to us and said, do you want to use my pictures for any of the promotions? And I said, you sure you want to put, and I said, great. I mean, it's, be- it's better for us, but we didn't want to put her right. on the spot. So I, it says a lot you about You wouldn't it. have asked her. Yeah. No, but right. it speaks to what a confident young well, woman she is, and, and you are, and I, yeah. I, you know. Yeah. Well, you know what's interesting is one of the most common bully, troll kind of comment that I get is that I'm insecure. And it's because I posted, you know, filtered pictures yeah. and, you know, just however. Well, do you understand how confident a woman I have to be to go online, find a man? I didn't know he was half my age when I saw him. He did look older. But (laughs) anyway, I have to own that. Um, Find a man that is half my age, be willing to be confident enough to go across the world, meet him, and then put all of that on television. So yeah. please stop I'm saying I am insecure. That is right. a very good like, point. Like shy and insecure are completely different. I'm not yes. insecure. Right. I, I can sometimes, I've, got, I've actually gotten over that now. Well, I can th- talk think about how exposed about. you are. I mean, one of the things that I guess must be liberating about doing a show for you, like 90 Day Fiance, is the things that you've said here. I mean, um, you know, your age with a younger man, mm-hmm. the situation that you dated women previously, you mm-hmm. don't think you'll go back to it, but you have nothing to hide. You've nope. put everything yeah. out there. Um, and, and you went over several of the topics, but that is something where, you know, there must to a degree be, hey, no skeletons in the closet. Look, no. do whatever you want. It, it's I'm an open book. Yeah. yeah. So somebody at one point doxed me. I have been married for three times um, and, uh, you know, already married three times. So it you know the whole thing it i've got so much to hide and i've got all this other stuff and they put that all out there so i made a video and i said oh you guys missed this and this and this and i and i said yeah you know what i am a real person mm-hmm. this is not scripted i am not here to make myself look pretty on instagram ever again like of course i'm going to put pictures up and stuff mm-hmm. like that but my goal is not to make myself look like i have this perfect life yeah i'm literally on a tv show that makes other people feel good about their lives <laughs> yeah and i'm aware of that i i don't care that if i you know if mm-hmm. if if the show gets edited in a certain way and i look bad or whatever fine mm-hmm. i know what what is real i know mm-hmm. what really happened um i know who i really am at the end of the day yeah. so like when it comes to the sonobello when it comes to the filtered pictures i will put up an unfiltered picture and then filter it and show them both 
Yeah. yeah. I will show, I have spent so much time teaching people how to filter their pictures because I got really good at it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not afraid to show an unflattering picture of myself. Like, you know, mm -hmm. when I'm overweight or, you know, so the before and afters, all of that, I don't care. Yeah. Well, we have a little surprise for you that we wanted to show you that we thought would be fun for you because you, you did your son bowel procedure, I think it's about three months ago. Uh -huh. um, and, and typically, you know, even though you do the fat's removed in during the one visit mm -hmm. it typically takes the body up to six months to like really recover and, and assume it's it's uh best shape after the procedure the swelling to go down right yeah. So, yeah. so you're still you're only really halfway to where right. your best visual results and since you don't have those photos yet you haven't been at the six month mark you're at the three month mark earlier today uh, we were taking some photos here of you as you know mm -hmm. for some some things that we're doing and and we decided you look so amazing and everyone my phone everyone i went to starbucks to get a coffee and like six people here were like oh my god she looks amazing oh my god she's so beautiful she's confident so, so so they grabbed one of the photos from today and put it up next to one of your before photos before Sonabelle that you sent us so we wanted to show you do you want to have a look yes you want to see so I do. Adrian's gonna pull it up so this is your big halfway I'm point reveal. It over. oh my god look look at yeah. your shape yeah that's what I like this shape. is the hourglass shape that not for nothing look at the stance like Oh, how yeah, you felt in the before oh, versus how you feel now. speechless right now. What are you yeah. thinking? <laughs> it makes me emotional. Like I'm, I've been the 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 before for so long, and had um, unfortunately some relationships that made me feel worse than that before mm -hmm. picture. Um, I had an ex who his favorite word for me was fat ass. Oh, my, my, well, I won't say who it was because that's probably Tell me, not good. I'm but kick his ass. <laughs> yeah. I, really. Let me so, give an someone at one point or another actually made my children call me fat ass. <laughs> and I go out of my way not to curse, but you tell me who that is. I'm yeah. working on it. I'm trying. Yeah. I've really been trying. Not around women and children, I don't curse. That's been my thing. I've been getting much better. But tell me who that is and I'll yeah. go kick his ass. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Off what, the what, air, what, I will what, definitely what do that. What kind of a human being mm -hmm. does that? Well, you know what I, w I did one time what? is I had I was in a relationship that was really, really bad, and this man liked to say bad things about me all the time, so I got a, a, a can of red spray paint and put all of the names that he was calling me in red spray paint in our living room on the wall. And I wow. said, doesn't that look awful? I said, can you imagine it being in here? I would Once you took say a baseball it, it's bat here. and cracked him over the head, but let's but go back good... to Happy Land. When you yes. first looked at that picture, <laughs> we were all like, wow, 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 but I looked over at you, and you were like this. You are like... So what yeah, was going through your mind? What are you thinking now when you see that? that? Well, I mean, I'm I'm so incredibly um, used to the before, and I'm busy right now and have a lot going on, so I don't necessarily see the after. You know what I mean? You don't focus on the after. So seeing it, I've never seen it before and after like that. Um, I see. You know, what I see my eyes go. Right. I see this this lighting yeah. up. I see this yeah. smile. Same. Like normally when we talk about a glow, it's in like one of our skincare products or mm -hmm. brands and it's the big hook, you know, use this moisturizer and it'll be a glow. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're like glowing and it's not a skincare thing. And the confidence and mm -hmm. you know, nobody posed you. Like you just kind of walked in and owned mm -hmm. it. And I saw that this big wardrobe room for you before. And I, I've been on sets before where, you know, it's, it's uncomfortable and you feel badly because the talent might have to try on 15 different things yes. and it's not fitting them and then they just shut down and they only want to wear one thing and i'm like watching as i walk by and you're trying on like 15 different mm -hmm. things and you're like this this or this or yep. this and this so you're having like fun playing and you're only halfway there you yep. still your results get better for the next I would three be months thrilled if it, if it stopped here i'll be honest with you i know yeah. it's not going to yeah. but i'm so happy with the way that i am right now yeah. but we're not going to give you a refund even no. if it did you, you're in for the full money because i get I, I get paid on that so a hundred percent let's I be really clear about Absolutely. the refundo policy no, you're happy with your results you had a good experience so mm -hmm. no refund uh, Absolutely. I don't speak on behalf of the brand. I just speak on behalf of me. Well, do you know the one thing that I am really looking forward to, though, is I'm still going to get my thighs done. I just didn't want to do it all at once. Mm -hmm. So I'm really looking forward to my hips and my thighs getting a little bit smaller. I'm not touching the butt, but I'm doing the hips and the thighs. That's an, so. I think I might go back for my arms. Yeah. My arms are a point. I got my chin done, too. Oh, somebody was telling yeah. me that. I yeah. love it. So that is, that is one thing you have that, that I am super um, self-conscious like of. Did you say you don't like it? 
No, no, I oh, love you it. it. Sorry, you have I just it didn't there. have it prepped. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> you should be just amazed. No, yeah. but it's it's um it's the one thing that ages me. I'm noticing right yes. now. Yes. Yeah, for me too. Yes. Yeah, it see aged it. me. Oh. I have, oh yeah, great. it's, I mean, really quickly, anything from, from like the side view or whatever, it's there. And it's not something, again, I'm yeah. not trying to become plastic. No. Um, just, I'm not trying to overdo it. Mm -hmm. right. But if I can do little things here and there, yeah. then like Sonobello, for instance, mm -hmm. you know what? If I had gone in and been put under general anesthesia and done the traditional liposuction and went through all of that, it's very much more invasive. It's yeah. more dangerous. Mm -hmm. There's more risk of, you know, problems. There's been people that have you know, passed away while they're doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could not face my children in the afterlife if I had passed away trying to lose a few pounds. Yeah, yeah, okay? right. So with Sonobello, when you do it, you don't go under general anesthesia. It's a mm -hmm. very, in, you know, uh, outpatient process. Yeah. They do it. They're very careful about what they do. Mm -hmm. Very few risks that are involved with that. And, yeah. and you get such a big benefit. The outcome is amazing. And I get, mm -hmm. I don't know about you, I'm sure you got a lot of private DMs, like asking about your Sonobello mm -hmm. experience. What's the pain level? Like all these questions. And let's be honest, yes, there's some pain. There's yeah. some discomfort. But I would do it a million times yep. o over to have these results. Yes. Like I'm so thrilled. I send her the yeah. DMs anonymous. I'm like, do they do, do they do calf implants? Signed well, anonymous. She's like, no. What's so funny to me too is I get a lot of messages from women who are like, oh, what about the pain, the pain, the pain, the downtime, yeah. the downtime? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, looking, they're like, have, they have four kids, five kids, three. I'm like, girl, if you gave birth or like have exactly. kids, like you can do this, and you will be very happy that you did. So would you? What would you be telling another woman who hasn't had a child yet? Oh my God! But what about the pain? Yeah. What do you tell them? Right. You forget about it afterward mm, anyway. Totally. And it is nothing like childhood. Well, no. You've described, and I've spoken to so many people, testimonials, who we've interviewed, and, and they never bring up the pain. No. And it's, it's like if you no. ask them, it, it's you almost like, I mean, most people have said it's it's much more minimal than I would have expected oh, when you oh, think yeah. of Absolutely. the results. It's like someone who says, you know, oh, um, you're going to get a tattoo, you know, oh, but what about the pain? It's like, well, you know, you're talking about yeah. discomfort for a couple of hours or depending on the scope of the piece mm -hmm. for the rest of your life. Yes. So if, if that's your approach, then Great don't analogy. do it, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. So, Let's have you on camera in pain. But yes. yeah. <laughs> that, that show you drill. forever. But you know, I'll actually tell you, I don't remember any pain during the process of, of the actual procedure, which is what everyone is so scared of. Exactly. Oh my God, you had all that skin removed under, yeah. and you were awake. Well, because they associate with being awake and be, yeah, but it's actually in reality, it's, it's she not. actually asked yeah. me while I was having it done. She's like, "Do you want to see it?" And I, I should have said no because it's not actually the person that I was, but I was a little loopy, and yeah. I said, "Yeah." So that was a little weird. I shouldn't have answered that question that way. But the, as far as the actual procedure goes, it was right. amazing, and yeah. I had no issues whatsoever. I agree. Same. Hey, I, I want to ask you something that we touched on before, and then we got uh, off track for a sec. Because you're, well, you, I'm sure you've been seeing it. Um, what is your take on the whole Britney Spears thing? It's it's yeah. so big in the news right now. What is your opinion? What is your take on it? Look, where there's smoke, there is fire. And um, I mean, obviously, she's under the conservatorship. So I think I think I said that right. I never did in my podcast, and they made fun <laughs> yeah. of me for it. So good for you, sister. Conservatorship. Yeah, That's close enough. Conservatorship. Like people people yeah, know what you're talking about. Road. The haters um, are going to hate, but you and me, yeah. you know, we made the same point. In the situation that she is in legally, um, no, I think it's unfortunate, and I and I just, it unfortunately it turned in it even now. I think most people are watching it because it's more of a mystery, and can we is she really leaving you know f uh, messages and secret codes and right. all this other stuff? And I think people need to be focused on the fact that she is a human being yeah. mm -hmm. that has been treated like an animal since she was a child, and you know put on a pretty dress and go dance and sing and, and do your thing. And and when when they realized oh my God she's going to grow up and become an adult and have a mind of her own, they were like no no we can't have that yeah you know you know yeah. part stood out to me we talked about this the other day we did a podcast on it was how vicious the world oh. especially the media was yeah. to her and and all these like half empty half baked apologies now but where were all these people <laughs> mm -hmm. at the time and and you know we showed some of the piece of uh, a Diane Sawyer interview oh, I saw where that. it was just i mean you wanted to come unglued like this woman Diane Sawyer was supposedly supposed to be a respected journalist credibility i mean she was like TMZ on crack yes. um, and that's a that's an unfortunate unfair comparison for TMZ to be compared to the way Diane 
Dan Sawyer yes. was in this interview. And you look at everyone else who is just playing pile on, beating up on this mm-hmm. little girl, um, bullying. Mob uh, mentality. In every yeah. sense of the word. Yeah. And now there's this, oh, why didn't anyone look out for her? Why didn't I? And, and I, I wonder where I'm getting at is, you're a grown woman. You said mm-hmm. that you're 50 or about to turn 50. I imagine that even for a mature woman who's, you know, been married, has kids, had had time to experience and process certain things. But mm-hmm. I imagine even on 90 Day Fiance, when people go online and just go after you for no reason, mm-hmm. it's got to hurt, right? Yeah. And then what makes what's through your mind compared to you thinking of a of when she was a kid and dealing yeah. with that? Well, you know, I actually had an epiphany at one point. One, I will say this, that we are in a much better place with when it comes to mental health now than we ever were even, we never even saw that coming Mm -hmm. back when she was going through her her struggles uh, initially. But um, I went to a therapist after the show came out, not because I was like, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm freaking out, but maybe I should proactively go, just go talk to somebody and just yeah. say, okay, let's make sure, let's just do a check. Let's make sure I'm okay. What should I, you know, what, what are some of the tools? Mm-hmm. But I actually had an epiphany one day. So I had one of my followers send me a message and they said, have you seen this? And I get that all the time. And if you're hearing this pod, please stop doing that to people. <laughs> if if oh, they no. see it, they see it. If it's negative, don't, don't DM them. Uh-huh. But they sent me something and it was hurtful. And just, you know, sometimes they stick in your craw a little bit more than mm-hmm. others or whatever. But it, I had an epiphany. I said, you know what? If I hadn't have seen that, I wouldn't have reacted to it. Mm-hmm. So what difference does it make if I see it? Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So from that point forward, I have just been like, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. It does not change my immediate world. Mm-hmm. If it were to come from a family member or somebody that I loved or cared about and they right. were saying something negative, then I need to process that and figure out, you know, yeah. okay, maybe I need to do something differently. Mm-hmm. But these people that are that, that get involved with this show, the reason that they do it is to escape from reality, ironically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they don't want to think about their own lives. They don't want to think about their own problems so as long as they are focused on what a train wreck my relationship might be at that particular you know episode yeah. they're not thinking about their own problems mm-hmm. and yeah. so it makes me happy if, the, yeah. if you want to call me a train wreck do it yeah because you're not thinking about your own problems and that's okay with me yeah because i'm not really a train wreck that's Good wonderful i think that's great honestly i think a train wreck would be a compliment for me in many ways i'd feel like a, a step <laughs> up so um did what did you say so this is true and congrats well, on being proactive in therapy i love yeah. that i love yes. therapy you should try it yeah. Yeah. you yeah. turn your slam on me <laughs> into like congratulating someone and being positive about mental health it's just an outrage right there but we'll, we'll take it but i, I think that, that that's you know a 50 year old mature season you know woman who can who can think that way yeah. and i look back at the britney spears situation and think now think you're a young kid i mean man when i was her age going through all this if i had a pimple i would be like you know or, or whatever it is i mean we deal with so many different things and, and the last thing on that i mean i don't want to take it down the path of something else but since we last spoke about britney on the show uh justin uh timberlake did his uh his quote-unquote apology, which really, in my opinion, amounted more of like a publicist handed him something to read yeah. or, or to type. Yeah. Um, I mean, how, how chicken blank, you know, was that? Yeah, it was a little too late, for sure. But what do you but, think his options were? And I'm yeah. not defending do him. Do a video no, speak? Even if he type spoke and did a video. Words, right. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. his own words. That was publicist speaking. Why not do a selfie video? I mean, you know, if the guy was coming That's out true. with an album, a song, a tour, if he had anything in the world to promote about himself, he would have done a video. So why not look in the camera That's and true. say, I'm sorry yep. for this. What I did was wrong. He also lumped uh, two apologies to two different yes. people into the same, like, yeah. you know, 20-word text yeah, but I, I also that. think like just like what we talked about with Brian Spears the guy probably couldn't win he probably could have done that and he still would have been torn apart yeah. for it you know so but sometimes you got to be torn apart and, yeah. and for no, the I things agree. that you yeah. know we've all done things that that are wrong or bad in our past and you know sometimes you just have to say I was you know I'm not trust me I mean I'm the poster boy for being an idiot and, and doing things that I wish I hadn't done and I've had to apologize for most of them and and, and you know but Sometimes you just do, um, and for him to like, that was my biggest thing, is to put it out in like a little written statement on, on social media to not even, 
you know, have, have looked in the camera and say, you know, I want to say I'm sorry. I want you to see in my eyes that I feel badly about this. Um, I think it was very disingenuous the way he did, that he did it, considering what he was admitting that he yeah. had done to her. Um, Do you know, um, so ironically, the very first video that I put out after the, the first um, show, the very first episode of 90 Day Fiance came out, the very first thing had to do with something that I had done um, to Ziet or said about Ziet or done some, I don't know what it was. And it was kind of an editing thing, but it was still based in reality, right? And instead of me getting angry about the memes and the trolls and doing all this other stuff, I did a video and I said, wow, that just, that was hard to watch, y'all. Mm. I cannot believe I didn't said that or whatever it was. I said, so bring it on. I deserve it. Let's do this. Mm. And I'm so sorry, Ziet, if I had it to do over again, I certainly would not have said that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you imagine Ooh. seeing yourself on camera on your little flip outs? Honestly, like the time and places we have little meltdowns for the world to see. Oh, no yeah. Well, do you know when you do a reality show, you don't, you, there's no way you can prepare for this that you cannot, I mean, ultimately you can, but you're not supposed to. They pay you and you're contractually obligated to film everything, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And we were in the middle of the Sahara Desert and we got into a small fight, which we had a few fights, but not that many, but they were, you know, they were, they were, they weren't small mm -hmm. and we disappeared and went into the tent and we're arguing and the producer literally just walks into the tent in the middle of the fight and i was like do you, do you mind <laughs> can you give what me are a you second doing? can you uh she goes no right. and calls the cameraman in there wow. and i was like oh shit just got real yeah oh, I'm sorry stuff just got real <laughs> I'm what have sure I done? Your small fights seemed huge because you're only dating within a time frame or trying yeah. to figure out, so everything yeah. feels so severe. Yeah. How, how did you? It, it's not common to be on multiple seasons, but you were on season three and you're on season eight, right? So, what do you attribute that to? Well, you know, it's funny within the 90 day universe, they actually do that. So it's, there's a, there can be a whole series of series. Um, so we were on the 90 day fiance before the 90 days, which means it's, you know, our visa system, our government requires that if we're going to do the K-1 visa, we have to go to their country and visit them. Mm -hmm. And we have to have pictures and proof of the, you know, the plane ticket and all this stuff. And then after that time, then we come back here, we fill out the visa paperwork. Once it's approved, they start that whole filming process right before. And then the 90 days starts when he gets here or she gets here. And after that, and hopefully if all goes well, you get married, mm -hmm. then you're on 90 day fiance happily ever after. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And then in the middle of all of that, you can do now 90 day diaries, pillow talk, all this other stuff. But the way that that works is if either you're not interesting, there's not enough drama, people don't like you, the relationship fails, then you fall mm. to the wayside and right. nobody, you know, nobody and cares. And kind of drop off. I have a so, question. Can I ask this question? Yes. Who is your favorite 90 day couple? Okay, the, the number one favorite couple of all time is David and Annie. They are oh, the mom and dad yeah. of 90 Day Fiance. They, they kind of take care of all of us uh -huh. and um, they're just, they're amazing. But from this season, it's Brandon and Julia. Really? I oh, why? Them. They are, you know, talk about a train wreck. They are in the very best way, you know. <laughs> they're they're yes. you're the train wreck. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, poor Brandon. Stand up to you. That poor family. guy. Oh, my God. I, <laughs> yes. You know what? I've watched a lot of these shows. Yeah. Obviously. And this is the first time, 100%, the first time I have ever gotten up and yelled at my TV. Yes. Okay, wait. At his parents? Yes. Yeah, me too. Oh, my he, gosh. It was like two or three Sundays ago when he was sitting down to tell his family that um, that Julia wanted to move out. And, yeah. the, and the father, first of all, the mom guilt with the crying and the mood. Yeah. She immediately went from, what? Are you doing? I know. Like, I was like, Betty, no. No, yes. man, you can't do that. That's not normal. Yes. And then the father coming across the table and doing this in his face. I know. Ooh, I was so hey, pissed. Does it, does it ever, and this might sound like mean, but it's not my thing. I'm just curious. You ever like almost want to be like, dude, behave because, you know, you want to come to America? Come on. No. No. Do you know what's interesting? That's terrible. No, 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 I didn't no, say I would do is, it. Don't tell me it's not on people's mind. Question. Thank you. Thank you, let Rebecca. Me tell you what, let me tell you the difference between 
what you think might be a bad, a, a good relationship to one that is a good relationship, mm -hmm. okay? Because I've been in both. Mm -hmm. The only reason I, oh yeah, I forgot this part. The only reason that I made it onto 90 Day Fiance is because that I was stupid enough to do it twice. <laughs> <laughs> and clearly she is the ultimate train wreck, okay? Because she went through it and it was really bad and then she was stupid enough to do it again. Do it again, okay. yeah. But, so my first relationship, um, looking back on it, 100% it was completely false. False. It was fake. Right. It was, he was just trying to get here. And, but, and I, you knew I, that at the time? You felt no, it at the time? Oh, at okay. the time you did it, but you learned. Yeah, gotcha. looking back on it, I can see it. And I was like, even looking at pictures of us together, I was like, oh my God, people were totally judging us when we were together. He's wearing so like a t-shirt that says a Statue of Liberty on it and stuff. Yeah, and I mean, he was he's just this little skinny guy. And uh, anyway, I don't care. He was him. no Tim Tebow lookalike. No, not at all. <laughs> right. um, but so, so it was just, you know, very obvious. I remember having a conversation with Zied during the first season. We were watching one of the shows. Um, he was in Tunisia and I was in a hotel up in Louisville, Kentucky. And I remember saying to him, I said, listen, I need to make sure that you understand that if I do get married again, you cannot leave me. Mm -hmm. I will not get married again mm -hmm. and, and ever get divorced. So once we're married, you don't have to stay with me, but you're never getting a divorce. Mm -hmm. And do you know what he told me? What? He goes, wait, wait, what? And I said, what do you mean? I said, yeah, I don't, I don't want to get, I don't want you to get here and then divorce me. Mm -hmm. And he said, Rebecca. And he didn't say it exactly like this, but he said it in his Zed voice. But he was like, Rebecca, I am so afraid that you are bringing me to your country and then you're going to get pissed off at me and kick me out and I'm going to be alone oh in a country gosh, with no cry. family or friends. And I was like, what? Yeah. Like, what are you saying to yeah. me right now? That never occurred to me. Yeah. But now you can you use that to that your advantage now that you know he's afraid yeah. of that, right? It's like, no. if he doesn't do the dishes. You both, I think no. it's saying like you both have these, um, this baggage or this, this, you're both scared of certain things, these yes. insecurities, you know, and, yeah. and you well, have to be in a safe place. When yeah. did we become a therapist over there, Miss Creative I Director? I don't know, but clearly you're not an expert in relationships. You have really bad just, advice over here. <laughs> use it against him? I didn't what? say, I didn't I say no. He didn't, he didn't say sh you should. He's asking uh, if I did. Thank you. Thank I you, see honest his wheels person. At the end. <laughs> no, do you know what's ironic is with, and I've never told anybody this ever in my entire life. Nobody knows this. So this mm -hmm. is a little bit of a piece of tea here. So my ex, the Moroccan, mm -hmm. um, after I kicked him out, I'm done, you gotta go now. Um, he came back to the apartment one day and he said, he had been crying, mm -hmm. he was done, he was finished, I'm going back to Morocco. You know what I told him? Mm -hmm. The F you are, no you are not, you are staying here. I went through hell and high water to bring you here. I don't want anything to do with you, but you're not going back home. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make sure you get your visa, I'm gonna make sure you're you know, a resident, and you're gonna stay here and you're gonna work your ass off and you're gonna make it on your own without me. You're going to do it. And, and yeah. he was like, what? What? I was like, nope, not helping you go home. Is not going to help Is he still you. here? Yeah, he is. And do you guys keep in touch? You no. 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 Right. He messages me about once every six or eight months and asks me for copies of the divorce papers. Yeah. And what he's really doing is he's trying to find out if, if there's any chance that right. we can get back together. If, still, if the door's and still open. Zero. So do you do that thing where you do like period, 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 exclamation point, period, period, period? <laughs> no, I don't respond. The, the, the digital wave? No. You know, if you think of what that comes out to. No, just... I do not respond. He's not worth my time Has anymore. Has he made a comment about your new life and show and relationship? Um, no, initially when I first, uh, we, you know, the, the breakup was not amicable, but it was um, civil in the beginning, mainly because I knew I had a legal responsibility that he was here. Mm -hmm. um, so I was still trying to help him get set up and do stuff like this. And, and I remember Zed called me at one point and um, he was like, who's that? And I said, none of your business. But then it kept coming up. And so one time I showed him what he looked like and I was like, this is the new person in my life and I don't want to talk to you about it. Oh my God, he is fat, which he was not, you know, oh, there was yeah. nothing about him. But if you compare them, I totally right. see where he was coming from. You know, he thinks that he was this super is, skinny. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, you know, he had all kinds of negative things to say about him. And I looked at him and I said, yep, still better than you. <laughs> hey, so, so let's talk about yeah. tattoos, uh, because, Absolutely. you know, 
you're uh, you're nicely covered. When did you start getting tattoos? Is that were you younger? Was that something later in life? And where do you go from here? Someone had said over at Sonabello that you had commented that after your procedure, you had some areas that you feel better about showing off that mm-hmm. you may want to get some tattoos there. And you know, they they called me and I'm like, oh yeah, because all us tattoo people hang out together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we all know yeah. each other. Um, okay, so uh, the very first tattoo I ever got, I was 24 years old. I was on my way to go pay a power bill. And um, I decided to go get a tattoo instead. I used the money to go get a tattoo. What did you get? What was it? It was, oh God, a, um, a oh, it was this one. It's a little feather, Indian feather or whatever. Mm. Like it's it's the one, the one tattoo I don't care for. Okay. But um, so after that, I think I got a couple of ones. I got one around my ankle, things like that. It wasn't until I was in my 30s and I had left my husband and um, started my whole new life. I changed careers. I became a motorcycle mechanic, um, started driving a motorcycle every day, doing all this other stuff. And at that point, I was like, wait a minute, now I can get tattoos if I want to. Yeah. And so I started, and, and my because my ex, the, the kid's dad, would never want me to put tattoos on my arms. He was like, don't you dare, that's trashy, you can't do it. Mm. The day that I left him, I went and got the, my first tattoo on my, yes. on my arm. But This is the guy who would curse at you and say terrible things about you, but he would tell you what was trashy? Oh yeah. That was oh, interesting, yeah. 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 <laughs> hey, Abusing yeah. a woman, classy. Tattoos, <laughs> trashy. <laughs> right, right. Interesting perspective, pal. Yeah, he just didn't care one way or the other. But um, yeah. But now so, you're all sleeved out. Mm-hmm. Well, I, so my my main professions have been in my in my older years have been I've been fortunate to do a lot of really cool stuff, but uh, motorcycle mechanic, chef, and um, private investigator, and all wow. three of those you can do whatever you want. You can you know have tattoos or not or whatever. So it's been liberating to just do whatever you wanted. So I have a question because my husband is also covered in tattoos, and he goes through like phases mm-hmm. where he'll go get like five tattoos in the span of like a month and then he'll like settle for a bit and then do the so with your tattoos how do you do you get once every one in a while or do you go in like phases where you get a whole big sleeve or so i started the like really sleeving out when i was 40 it was like right at my 40th birthday party i think or my 40th birthday Mm -hmm. and at that point yeah i think i was going probably every eight to nine, 10 months, something like that, and getting something pretty significant. Mm -hmm. Um, Unfortunately, because I'm with the show now and I'm under contract, anything that I want to do, it's not that I can't do it, it's that they're like, well, can we film it? Mm, And then I have to wait for the time for the filming and that stuff, because I want to get a big chest piece. That has been the last remaining, should I do it kind of thing? And I got the nerve up to do it. I even had a custom temporary tattoo and I wore it for three days, five days, something like that. On your chest just to try it yes, out. Yes, because that, it. Yeah. that's big. Yeah, that's I, smart. I will never have a tattoo removed. Once right. it's on me, it's on me. Right, right. So I knew once it's there, I'm not, you know, so I just want to make sure. It's the only time I've been a little How bit How did you insecure. feel when you had it on? It was amazing. Yeah. I loved it. You're like, you got to oh, get this awesome. thing back. So you got your design in place. Do you have your artist or you're not sure yet? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I have a, an artist, uh, Paragon Tattoos in, in uh, Cartersville, Georgia. Mm-hmm. And Stephen Hollander, he is incredible. This guy is, he did one of my my favorite uh tattoo Ooh, it nice. looks like it's not great but it looks exactly like my father's last painting before he passed away oh, yeah. wow. and it's perfect it's if it's how you want it it's yes. perfect you know? and i even told him i said look i don't need this to look the way you can do it i know right. you can make it look perfect but this was my right. father's last painting before he passed away before, yeah. before he became uh, not lucid and then passed away yeah. and so i needed to have him do this tattoo and show it to my father and unfortunately he didn't recognize it by the time i got it but mm-hmm. yeah. but you um, have you have it forever and yeah it's a it's a yeah. great memory for you yeah that's a beautiful story um, I had been told, I don't know if this is true or not, but there are some other areas that you may dip into uh, uh, on your body now uh, because of your procedure of the liposuction at Sonabello. Is it true that you, you may be considering something in the lower tummy area or some of the areas that you previously were said you were uncomfortable showing off? That's what I had been told. Yeah. I don't think I'll do the tummy area, but that's just because I've never even considered that. Maybe because it wasn't a good place to do it at the time. I don't know. But I'm definitely looking at the back, mm. uh, the you know, the hip area, the the back itself. I you know, 
I have. Ooh, what if you and I get tattoo. tramp stamps together? <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? Is that like a? That's you know not what? a bad word, is it? At Please this tell point? me you don't have a tramp stamp. I I don't have a tramp stamp. Okay, yeah. The reason is because I have a story. I, I was kidding. I went on a date. Yeah, I know. I went on a date with a guy once, and uh, yeah, happened to notice that he literally <laughs> had a tribal tramp stamp with a blue rose in the middle of it, and I was done. Ooh. I was like, yeah, there's no getting out of that. That's a tough one. Can't do that. I met a guy once who had like a sun, like a like around oh, the belly. Yeah. A couple of guys I've seen like that. Like, oh, oh, no. like a circular sun around or a tribal thing button. just around their belly button. I'm like really? that's a weird. That's no, a weird. That's not normal. No, it's not. Uh, well, I were guess. you thinking of? A I mean, circular... I try not. To, I, not, I try not to judge tattoos, but there right. are a few that you just yeah. Well, marks. well, if you come up with something that you think is interesting or a desire, you know, we have our Think and Ink show. So maybe at some point we'll, we'll do a that. tattoo story together. Um, if there's yeah. something meaningful for you, I can tap my cup if I want to. We'll play in Drew's <laughs> next the, tattoo as well. That's the beautiful thing. No, I, I want to be part of telling her cool story about it. So it sounds like you're already set for this area, but maybe mm -hmm. somewhere on your back or just something comes up and then we can have some fun like picking out an artist together and We'll do maybe a Think and Ink uh, story. I know you saw some of our Think and Ink episodes, which are kind of fun. It's really just a story about the, t the tattoos themselves because mm -hmm. the artists are just, they're amazing. The people who are, I, I love the story. Like, I love the story that you just told about um, that, that the tattoo that you did for your father. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It wasn't by classic definition perfection, but it was perfect for you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it looks just like the painting that he did, so that's perfect. Yeah. Um, no, so I'm, I'm, I, I have one tattoo on the top of my back. And then I have a small one on the on the other side. I don't know, but that's it on my back. My back is a clear canvas, mm -hmm. and I've never felt com you know confident about it until now. So I you you know as as a tattoo person, you run out of good canvas sometimes. That's right. That's right. And you get you have to get creative about where you're going to put them. And I've never right. thought the back was an option, and now I do. Yeah. So I'm so excited to find the piece that goes on my back. The the problem okay. for me with the back, even though I've started doing my back, because I you do run out of space in other areas is I'm way too selfish because I want to see, thank you, but I want to see the thing. Thank you. It's like, and this, I have a friend, he's an artist, he does these amazing things, this is going to be epic, it's going to be, and he wants to put it on my back, and he's like, why don't you want to? I'm like, because why would I do that for other people to get right. to see if I go to right. the pool or the beach? I could frame beach? it and put it on your desk for you. I, I would have to be, it's not yeah. a bad idea, but actually. Do you realize how much fun they'd make of me if I had to walk around here with one of them with a mirror behind my back and the other in front just so I could see it and enjoy it? And that's what I would have to do. Yeah. So I'm just setting myself up for more judgment and ridicule. Well, I'll tell you, it's funny. Um, I remember I was sitting in my living room one time, and I have had the little back thing. It's like this big on my back for ages. I don't even remember. I was in like late 20s, early 30s when I got it done. And it's this ridiculous looking little fairy chick with some flowers around it or something I don't know and um, but I forgot that it was back there and one of my kids I was sitting in the floor of my living room I was playing with the dog and one of my kids I was wearing like this low-cut tank top in the back one of my kids took a picture and I had my hair up and I was like oh I forgot about that tattoo <laughs> yeah. so yeah there is there that whole I've done that I've done yeah. that you're like going in the shower and you well, who put that there? Right. Like, How and, did they get there? Yeah. So, you know, it's one of those things. Well, you're, you're spectacular. Uh, I know we took up a lot of your time. Um, do you guys it. have any any last things that uh, well, you want to be able to? But I don't know if we can really. I don't, yeah, I don't who, know because there the, were a lot the, of like. The one person. Are you married? You know, like what happened? You know, yeah. spoiler alert kind of thing. We yeah. don't want to spoil anything. A lot of the questions that people wrote in because we said who has questions. Like ninety nine point nine percent of them were not. You're not able to answer. I know because we like the show. But here, this one I thought I saw. Let me see if I saved it on my phone. So while you're looking for that, I will confirm certain things that maybe if you haven't caught up on the show, spoiler alert, spoiler alert if you haven't caught up on the show, but um, Zied is in America. He did make mm -hmm. it here. Mm -hmm. um, our 90 days is not up yet, and I cannot confirm if we are still together or if we are married, but he is here and Tune enjoying in. America right now. That is so like exciting. breaking news. Can I, I ask like, us? Wait, I was gonna. This poor woman. She has the one question we're allowed to ask, but it's not really <laughs> a question. Right. It's more of a compliment. So, um, S N R two zero three zero on Insta wrote, "I have a question. I like this. This is smart because it's really not a question, but she's getting in. Why does her story not get more time? It seems like TLC promos her story, but then cuts it short. We want more of Rebecca." So that's a, a statement from a fan. <laughs> more than I a have question. a. I have an explanation for that. So. The first season, they got a lot out of us. 
because we were newbies and we didn't know what we were doing and we let them film anything and everything and and let them do what they wanted right and this time I have stood up for myself a little bit more and been more protective over the important parts of any relationship or of my life or my children's lives things like that so there have been times where I have said no to filming something I've said no to once it's been filmed um, to allow them to take it in another direction or hey why don't we explore this or whatever so you get some control over that you can say I, I'm, not, I'm not cool with that only if it doesn't get filmed once it is filmed it's no it's I can't say a word. Right, but so okay, so you're kind of be like, I'm not filming that, or this yes. is going the wrong no, way. No, we're not. We're not because they they don't script it, but they can say, why don't we take you to this place and you guys right. can talk about this? Mm -hmm. Why have you thought about doing this or you know right. whatever? So it's still under our control, but once it's filmed, it's right. you know it's their okay. property. Um, but they have several times made the comment, well, we really need more content on you and Zed. We you know we don't have that much, whatever. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and I Fine just get quiet. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't feel the need to fill the silence mm -hmm. with, well, why don't we do this? Right. Or and at one point I refused to film a scene, which was okay. And and the and you know the producer said, okay, great. Do you have any other ideas? And I said, nope, sure don't. Do you? <laughs> and I just get quiet. You know, I'm I'm yeah. like, I'll let you do that. So so less we, is more. Yeah. 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 Well, listen, you, you are amazing. Um, Thank you. You too. You Rebecca are Parrott, amazing. We've had a blast. So hopefully you'll come back and see us again. Absolutely. Um, this is, uh, if you're watching, subscribe, please, as Not Seen on TV. You, YouTube, you can find Adrian and I on uh, Instagram, <laughs> uh, Director Drew Official. And what are you? A. Ormsby. Right. There you go. And private. Uh, and private. And of course, Rebecca friend. Parrott, you have no problem being found. You're out there. You're yes. wonderful. Uh, really appreciate it. Very, very sweet lady. Uh, congratulations on your Sonabella experience. You look glowing and wonderful. And I, I hope we get to see your photo at six months. I hope you'll share that with us. Absolutely. But, um, your confidence is, is, is wonderful. Really enjoyed being with her. you. You are anything you. but a train wreck. So Rebecca <laughs> Parrott, 90 Day Fiance. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.